G'day humans, Chris Stead here. Today I'm reviewing the DJI Mic 2, which you can see right here. And in this video, I'm gonna take you through its features, its price, where it's upgraded on the original, and also take you on some tests of some of the key features. Let's dive in. Now the DJI Mic 2 is a compact audio solution for content creators. You know, it's got amazing sound, but also brings with it flexibility and a portability that just has to be admired. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a while, you've noticed that most of the videos that I've done on this channel have been recorded with the Rode Wireless Go 2, which is a competitor to the DJI Mic 2. In fact, I'm using the Rode Wireless Go 2 now so that I can hold this in my hands and show it to you. If I was using the DJI Mic 2, it would sound like this. Can you notice a difference? Maybe I should do a comparison video with the Rode Wireless Go 2. Subscribe. But back to my DJI Mic 2 review. So is it any good? Now here in Australia, this is gonna set you back $529. Uh, in the US, it goes for $349 US. Now that price, it's pretty good. So if we compare it to say the Wireless Go Pro, sorry, the Wireless Pro, uh, from Rode, that goes for $699 here in Australia. And if you look at the Wireless Go 2, that goes for $449 here in Australia. So it kind of sits in between those two points. You will find some kind of lesser known brands that aren't as fully featured as the DJIs and the Rodes of this world. In that $200 mark, if you're looking for a cheaper solution, uh, this is kind of at the premium end, uh, and, but you're getting a lot more for that money to be sure. And for that $529, you're pretty much getting everything that you need. As you can see here, you've got the, this case, you've got another case over here, it comes with the windshields, it comes with the receivers, it comes with lightning cable support, USB-C cable support. This is a charging case as well. It's, locks really nicely. I'll take you in closer to the design in a second. Uh, but you're pretty much getting everything that you need to just to take off and get going with that $529. The only thing you don't get is a lavalier, uh, like an uh, add-on. So you've got to kind of have the bulkier, uh, you don't get one of these basically <laughs> included, which is a, which is a shame uh, because that's a really useful piece of extra kit, but you don't need it. Uh, you can get away without it. So you, I think it's pretty well priced for what, what you're getting. Now let's start with a look at what the DJI Mic 2 brings to the table that we didn't get with the DJI Mic. Now you're gonna get a slightly longer battery life. It's not a huge increase in battery life, but there is an increase. You're going to get better connectivity, in particular with lightning devices, so iOS devices, but also with direct Bluetooth uh, connectivity, which is, is gonna, well, it really does open up the use case for this device quite significantly. Uh, on top of that, you can now rec rec record to the device with 32-bit flow, so that's gonna give you, you know, a, a, a better quality file to work with in post. And there's been some design improvements as well, notably uh, with the case. So we've got this little lock on the case here as well, which works really well. And you're also getting now a larger touch screen a more usable touch screen and also an analog dial as well, which I really, really love. But I'm gonna go into the design a bit more in a second. Righto, so usually I would run through all the features and specs as if they're kind of bullet points. But with this particular device, I think what's stronger is actually showing you because, because everything's on device and that's one of the big features of it. I want to take you through what it is. So first off, let's just start with the case. So it's, it's made of a really, really nice material, uh, pleather or leather or something similar. And it feels, expensive the zipper feels expensive everything's feels expensive i don't know why there is this kind of hole here but uh, now if we open her up and look inside this is the actual main kind of case that you're probably going to have on you more often than not now over here you've got your two wind shields now this is important because this is one of my negatives here is that the wind shields are separated from here now there's also a trs cable that comes with it uh, now there's supposed to be a USB charging cable that comes with it too, but for whatever reason, it just wasn't in mine. Um, so I suspect potentially because this is a review product, maybe someone reviewed it for, for me and didn't put it back in. That could be the only reason I can think of, but there's definitely supposed to be one in the product. So we'll put this to the side for the moment. Now looking at the case itself, so this lock mechanism is new and it's really good. So it, that is never coming apart. Like you can move that around everywhere and it's not gonna come apart on you, right? And you open it up and everything's just super smart. It's very, it's like got a, a weight to it, a solidness. And I know sometimes we like to go, you know, lighter is better, but uh, 
the actual weight of this is so awesome that I think most people are just gonna feel it and go, yeah, wow, this is an expensive piece of kit. Nice little rubber feet on it as well. So you open it up and that's when you get to the device. Now in here, you've got your two transmitters and they both come with these magnetic clips that allow you to basically just put it on one side of your shirt or you know, other piece of clothing or maybe even a, potentially a backpack depending on how thick the strap is. Uh, and that works really well, that holds on very steady. And so they both come with that as standard in the package. So that's those two. Then you've got the actual receiver as well, which I'm gonna to talk to a lot uh, at the moment. As you can see, it's immediately picked up that I've got two transmitters and it's seeing them both and it's showing me the levels. So I'll go into more in depth than that in a second. Now you can see here on the bottom as well, it's got this little kind of clip built in. This is the shoe. So if you want to stick it to a camera, you can just uh, put this in the shoe in any direction as it turns out like this, uh, and then just, you know, go out to the actual camera to record the audio on device. You can also plug, plug in headphones so you can kind of get an idea of what your sound's actually coming through like, which is particularly handy if you're going to, uh, you know, be trying to adjust the gain or anything, get that exactly right. Now, you've also got here a little, tiny little USB-C adapter and a tiny little lightning adapter. Now, again, this fits into the case really beautifully and I really like the way they put it together. And the case itself is charging, right? So it does say that you know, on the feature set, it does have 18 hours of battery life as their ultimate battery allowance. And that is a bit up, like three or four hours up, I think on the DJI Mic 1, advertised battery life. Uh, now that goes down if you're using the, the noise cancellation. If you use that, it drops probably by about 30%. However, 18 hours I think is very misleading. I think you're probably, if you're just using it on the heavy load, you're probably gonna get about five hours or so. Um, and then a case itself holds more battery. So it says, it's not, literally 18 hours it's advertised you're gonna get 18 hours just out of this that means you're gonna they're what they're basically saying is you're gonna get nine hours and then you can put it back in the case and the case will pump it up another nine hours so that's that's how they get their, their 18 theory but i don't think the 18 is actually that right i think it's a bit you know a fair bit less than that but i think the battery life is still okay now check out this design here so this is the little clip that comes off so if you just push it out it comes off really easily and this allows you to put in your device like this. Oh, sorry. Right, so that allows you then to connect to a phone. All right, now I do like this and I do also really like that it'll go, it'll actually fit back in with that still attached. Where they've kind of stuffed up a little bit in my opinion is that this thing doesn't have anywhere to go at this point in time. When it's out, it actually fits nicely kind of in this space just there. You can see it just kind of fitting in there. However, once you've got that in, it can't go there and there's nowhere for it. So that's a little thing that I wish that they had thought of with the design. And the other thing, we'll go back to our case here, is the windshield, which you kind of always want to have on you. Now once, this just, this actually is again, part of what I love about this is that a lot of stuff is smartly designed. So you get this little prong here that goes into the, 3.5 mil jack. Clips on there, really solid. It's not gonna just fall off it. Okay, but then when you go to put that back in the case, obviously that's not gonna close. Now, I just wish that they had developed a way where you could get your windshield, as you just, oh, see I just record, bumped the button then. Uh, get your windshield to fit in here and just close that and then I could do away with this most of the time. I wouldn't even need it. So it's, it's kind of a bit unnecessary. If, you could just, if this could just store in here somehow, then we'd be sweet. But anyway, minor problem really. Now, let's just go into some of the, the way this is used. So on the transmitter itself, you've got a power button for obvious things. It turns the power on and off. You've got a, a sync button, this is for Bluetooth. So when you wanna um, pair it to a device, 
Then over here, you've got a recording device. The recording, so just tapping this allows you, it's on this particular device. So you don't have to go back to the receiver, you don't have to go back to your phone, you don't have to go into an app. You can just press that and it'll start recording immediately to the actual transmitter. So that's really cool. And you can just toggle that on and off and you can toggle it on and off whether or not it's a 32-bit float that's recording. Now the power button, if you just tap that once, it goes into active noise cancellation mode. So that's when you get noise reduction. So you basically, once, when you tap that, that's when it clicks in and off, off and on. So again, you just press it on the device and on, off and on and, and there you go. Now I'll show you what that looks like. So if we, oh, if I take this back off, actually before I take that off, I just want to show you something while we're here. Here's a phone. The way that this plugs in is it plugs in to your USB-C port like so. Right, that's it. Okay, it's a pretty neat idea. It just goes in like that. You don't have to clip it on somewhere to the side or have it dangle or anything like that. It's just sitting there part of your phone. The problem of course is if you're right-handed, as I am, and you want the camera to kind of be in the right spot, you know, it's like the top here, your hand wants to sit like that and it really gets in the way. Obviously you can go left-handed, but if you're right-handed, you're probably gonna to wanna to hold it like that. Uh, all your buttons are kind of usually up here as well. So this is a great idea, but it does also get in the way a little bit. So again, minor thing, but something that potentially they could look at in future iterations. Okay, so let's get rid of that. And again, I love how sturdy this is. Like it doesn't just fall out. You really gotta give it a little push. It comes out and like, this, this just talks to quality for me. And then put it back in its spot over here. Now, if we're having a look at the actual device. So we've got this one out and this is the one that's working. You can see it going up and down. Now you can see that little yellow icon there. That is the noise cancellation. If I press this button, it vibrates. It's a tactile vibration. Unfortunately, that sound of the vibration actually comes through, but you can turn the vibration off, which is what you're going to have to do if you're going to go off and on during a shoot. I don't know why you'd do that. You'd probably just go one or the other, but if you were, you got to turn the vibration off. Now, if I go into the record, you're gonna see this red box come around it. This is showing that it's actually recording now. So everything's kind of, as you can see, it's all on device, it's all with you. You don't have to go into an app, and I really like that. Okay, now this device here allows you to click it once, so it's, it's got, a, you can just dial it, which you use in other parts of, the, parts of the process, I'll show you, or you can click it. And when you click it, it allows you to change the gain between minus 12 and plus 12 for the actual receiver or I'll put it back to zero or it'll catch me out. <laughs> uh, you can tap it again and you can go to the actual transmitter and change the gain on the actual transmitter. Like so, right? So it's, it's quite straightforward. You can also see obviously it's telling your battery, it's telling your signal strength as well. So you can see all that information on the device. Now, as soon as I get the other one out and power it on, holding it by a couple of seconds, it should, there we go, pop up. So now we've got both. So we've got both of them on there and this one will behave in the same way. So I can set my uh, noise cancellation, I can put it on to record, I can put them both on to record and so forth. So really easy to use. You can also go into each one individually and turn off we can mute it, uh, you can set it to record, you can do all that stuff that's on device, also through the uh, receiver. You don't have to have the transmitter to activate it and vice versa. So that, again, I love that flexibility. And you can see the touch screen, which is a bit bigger this time. I think it, I think it's, it was, I think it might be one inch this time. I think last time it was slightly under one inch. Uh, I've, I've seen people complain online about it being a little bit fiddly, but I actually think it's quite good. And I've got big horrible fingers that are, you know, Hard to use. Now, let's have a look in the settings here. So what, what I love is as well, once you get into the settings, you can actually use the dial here and that's clicking. You probably can't hear it, but it's clicking as I move my finger, there's a real tactile feel to it as you go through. So as soon as you kind of, if you want to, you, can, you don't even have to use the touch screen. So let's go into the receiver settings here. So obviously in receiver, you got mono, but you can go mono, 
mono with a safety track. So that means it's gonna record out of both of them and one of them's just gonna be at a, at a lower um, gain, just in case you end up stuffing that up and it's, and it's too loud, so that's the safety. Or you can obviously go to stereo and go left and right, or you could even switch it to right and left. So you're starting to probably get an idea here of the flexibility that I'm talking about. Uh, if we move over from stereo, uh, well, I've got on stereo at the moment. Now this is really cool, recommended camera settings. So if you go in here, you can actually choose from some of the popular cameras. So if we go to a name and you can choose say a Canon, or I can just click it and then you can choose, you know, between a whole range of these and it'll, and once you do that, if we go back to the main bit here, see it's put on to plus nine. So that's because it's actually aware of that camera's uh, audio, I guess, position and it has worked out how to adjust it for you automatically, although you can obviously go in and manually adjust it even further. Really cool feature. Now, I wish I think they could go even further with that. I'd love to see them include mobile devices, leading mobile devices in there. And I realize it's probably not as straightforward, but for, for, for regular consumers, like regular people, like not the hardcore, that would just be a bit of a game changer as well. Because I know, for example, the Pixel, when I'm filming on my Pixel, it, it takes in sound at a whole different level to my Samsung, like significant difference. Uh, just that on default settings. Okay, so we'll go back into the receiver settings. So that's your camera. Uh, you can obviously change the gain in here manually. You can change the volume of the headset. If you've got a headphone plugged into the to here, you can the volume of that. Uh, you can get the camera to turn power off and on. Uh, like with, with so if, if, it's, if, you, if you've got this in the shoe of a camera, when this camera turns off, this turns off. It doesn't turn off these, notably. It only turns off the uh, receiver, but it's just a power saving option. Uh, and you can have an auto off on that as well. So you can have after a certain amount of time, you can just get it to turn off itself. I'm hoping this is coming through. Uh, and obviously you can link device manually. So if the box doesn't work for some reason, you can link things manually. All right, so let's just scroll back out and I'll show you the transmitter settings. So in here, you can do a low cut. So this is gonna basically, if you're right next to something that's really loud, like just to say it's a, an engine running or, the hum of traffic or a really loud fan or a computer drone droning on or something like that uh, You can just activate this and that will allow you to basically Cancel that to some extent. So it's gonna it's gonna realize you're saying hey I need some help here with the audio and it's gonna do that on device So you don't have to do it in post uh, you can obviously access the gain and do that manually You can do the 32-bit re recording. So that's when you when you when you hit the record button here uh, you can record it just as the 32 bit and that's going to give you more flexibility in post. Uh, you can lock the recording. So you, so if you want to see if you're doing an interview or something like that, you can press the record button. So you're recording a safety recording on the device itself. It's going to hold, oh, how many hours was it? Uh, substantial, well over 10. Uh, I feel like it was about 15 hours. So I think the road can actually do a fair bit more but that's still a lot, right? You're gonna be struggling to hit that in most scenarios. But if you put recording lock on, they can't bump the button and unrecord it. So it's an extra safety measure. So you can turn this so that once you press the button, it is locked on and it can't be turned off. So that's really handy for interviews or something like that where you just, you cannot run the risk that someone bumps it when it's on their, on their person and turns it off. Uh, you've got your noise reduction uh, button. So you can, you can, Activate that. Uh, auto record, so obviously that just means that every single time you start recording, it's just gonna also auto record on the device as well, so you don't have to push the button. It's just like, hey, you want it every time. So just, you know, let's just take it out of the the, 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 the use. You don't have to do it yourself. And you can also look at the storage and see where you're at with that so you don't get caught out uh, with not enough storage space. The vibration notification, as I told you before, you're probably gonna have to turn that off if you're gonna be switching between anything during a recording because the sound of the vibration actually comes through the recording as you'll, as you, as, as you'll see when I do some tests. Uh, you can also turn off the LED light. So this is pretty critical. So you've got this green light here. It changes color. It's green when you're connected to this. It's red when it's recording. It's blue when it's on Bluetooth. Uh, and obviously if you're doing any sort of recording at night, that's just gonna be uh, unwelcome. So you can switch it so that's not even a problem anymore. Uh, and you can, you can, you can, make it so the transmitter will turn itself off if it's been inactive for a while. 
So I'm, I'm hope by taking you through the features individually like this, you can see the kind of flexibility and the strength that you have to actually customize this experience and use it in different ways. Okay, and let's have a look at the last menu, which is uh, your basic settings. So obviously the brightness of this thing, uh, what language you want, you can set the date and time, you can do a full factory reset, you can do the uh, updates. Now I, to update it, you just go to the DJI website, you download a bin file, you upload it, you just plug in the USB-C, uh, where is it, here, into the computer and drag it across and it just updates. It was really easy. Uh, and to some extent, compliance info there. Right, so that's what you got across those uh, those settings. So that's probably giving you a, a decent idea of the flexibility here with the device itself. And when you add in the fact that you can connect this with Bluetooth to any sort of Bluetooth device and still have all of these kind of things going on in the background, it really does, uh, it's really quite impressive. I, I feel like they've done an excellent job making this thing pretty small, pretty light, but have this analog feel, this good touch screen, and everything you wanna do is just like really simple and straightforward. It's not confusing at all. Okay, so what we're gonna do here is a bit of a test. Now I'm gonna stick this on to the safe recording mode. All right, so it's gonna start recording a second track on this device, as well as recording a track on my phone. I'm recording this on a Samsung S22. So I just wanna see how this goes with a mobile device. Now. I'm going to walk this way. I'm going to stop every 10 meters or so. I'm going to turn on, I'm going to do a, say something so that you can hear what it's like. And I'm also going to turn on the active noise cancellation and you can see what the difference is at set distances all the way across this field. So let's go. Okay, so that's about 10 meters. So that's 10 meters talking without the active noise cancellation. <laughs> And this is 10 meters talking with the active noise cancellation. Let's move on. Okay, so this is approximately 30 meters away. Now this is me talking at 30 meters away without the active noise cancellation. And this is me talking 30 meters away with the active noise cancellation. Let's keep going. So this is me now 50 meters away, talking without the active noise cancellation on. Now it's 250 meter supposed range line of sight. So let's just see what happens here if I turn around and whether or not you can still hear anything. So I'll just keep talking and I'll do a turn around and can you still hear me like you could before or can you not? And I'll keep turning around until I'm facing the front again. So I wonder if that changed the way that you can hear me. It's supposed to be line of sight. Okay. And this is me now talking with the active noise cancellation on. All right, let's move on. Okay, we're now 70 meters away, more or less. Can you still hear me? This is me without the active noise cancellation on. This is me with the active noise cancellation on. Not if there's any difference there. And now I'll just turn around, see if there's any difference in the line of sight. Can you still hear me? Can you still hear me? Can you still hear me? Turning all the way around. All right, let's kill it, let's go on. All right, I'm now 100 meters away. Theoretically, you should be able to hear me perfectly fine right now with the active noise cancellation off. And when I turn the active noise cancellation back on, you should still be able to hear me, but even clearer. Okay, and I'm assuming when I talk around here and I'm going around like this, that you're not gonna be able to continue to hear me when my back is to the receiver, which is on the other side of this field. Okay, well, I'm at the end of the park, it's 100 meters across. I'm gonna just walk down here out of sight and we're gonna see if you can hear anything. And we're gonna compare that to the safety recording, which I'm recording onto the device itself. Okay, now if you can still hear me, <clears throat> I can no longer see the device. I reckon I'm about 125 meters away. So this is actually still coming through right now. Uh, I'm very impressed. But uh, I've got a feeling it won't be either with the active noise cancellation off or with the active noise cancellation on like I have right now. Certainly if I turn around, I can't imagine there's gonna be any sound whatsoever. Now a few meters from this point, I lost reception. So this is what the safety backup on the device itself picked up. 
Okay, and I'm now going roughly, I reckon 140 metres away, 150 metres away, over the edge of a hill. So if you can still hear me now, then uh, sold. <laughs> All right, let's head back. And now I'm coming back into reception. Right now, I'm just coming back over the hill now. So it'd be interesting to see whether or not now that I've got line of sight again, whether I've come back in. I'm just going through a couple of trees and I'll walk back out into the field and hopefully you will have started picking up the audio again. Otherwise, I'm just a strange man walking through a park talking to himself and someone's probably calling the cops right now saying, what the hell is going on with this guy? All right, so I'm just gonna keep talking on my way out to the device just to see whether or not there's any change in the quality of the audio that's coming through. Now, I don't know what the actual reality is of you being 250 meters away from your camera and shooting. You probably can't leave your camera sitting there. It's a long way to run if someone decides to nick off with it. But uh, if you're out in the wilderness, hiking, trying to get some cool nature shots or something, you could very well be a certain distance away. And I just went 100 just to get across that field there. So that's, uh, I think a more likely scenario is probably around the 100 meter mark. It's gonna be hard to keep line of sight unless you go up a opposite hill or something like that. So like I said, this is with a mobile device, not with an actual camera, but I feel like Mobile device is probably the bare minimum of what you'd be using with this DJ Mic 2. Okay, well there I am, I'm back. Okay, time for another test. So I've moved out to the main road here, and we're just gonna try that active noise cancellation to see what difference it makes. Now, so theoretically it should bring out my voice and try and drown out the hum of all the vehicles that are coming behind me. Now obviously the, the, the sound's moving about a bit. I've got the active noise cancellation off right now. So let's turn it over and see how she goes. Now, interestingly, you might have also noticed in my other test when I was walking across the field, the range test, that there was a vibration sound coming through. And that's because the vibration of the actual device on my chest was effectively uh, coming through as audio on the actual recording itself. So that's actually something pretty serious to note. So theoretically, uh, I should just be able to turn off the vibration. You can, there's an option for that in the menu. And if I cut out that out, obviously I'll lose the noise, but also lose that tactile feedback. So it's a real shame that it hasn't worked out a way of knowing that it's going to vibrate and knowing not to record that vibration sound somehow. Just having it at a certain decibel perhaps that it can just cancel out. Uh, so anyway, the noise cancellation is on now. You can see the little icon. Uh, so hopefully I'm coming through a bit clearer now than I was before. Maybe we can go do another test. Okay, so here we are with another test. I'm standing in front of my aircon unit, which I've currently got on full load. So this is probably the most common situation that a lot of recorders or content creators get into, which is like air conditioning units, fans, humming sounds from computers, those types of things in the background. This is charging back up now, it's really starting to blow. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is, I'm talking with the active noise cancellation off right now. So let's see what happens when we put it on. Okay, was there a big change there? Did you notice a big difference at all? I noticed it before when I was on the road uh, that it just kind of like really deadened the sound straight away. And so hopefully you noticed a pretty decent sound as well. And also going back to my range test across the park before, I was stuffing around with the, the gain before that. And I think I might have had it set slightly too up. So I've actually brought the, the gain back down. So it'd be interesting to see uh, if the sound of the voice is also coming through a bit better now uh, than it was before and how that gain through the actual device um, is you know, effective. All right, I'm going to run another test for you now. So right now I'm recording as per I was before through my phone directly using the transmitter to the receiver. I'm now going to switch that over and transmit directly from the transmitter to my phone via Bluetooth and we'll see if the recording sounds any different to you. And now this is me recording with the microphone using Bluetooth. Okay, so same mobile phone, first recording that was with the receiver in the phone directly and the second was through Bluetooth directly to the phone. So if you can notice the difference there, that is the test. <laughs> uh, 
Uh, it's fair to say, obviously, that with Bluetooth, there's a lot of other software coming into the picture, which could be the root cause of any differences, but at least just to give you an idea of what to expect from the performance. So as you can see from those tests, some of the key features for the DJI Mic 2, you know, they really, really work and they work you know, really well. Uh, so like that range test, for example, I was very impressed by how well the sound clarity kept together. Even as I got further and further away, even as I started to take a line of sight away at a distance, the quality was still decent. You could still hear what was going on. So that was impressive. I thought the active noise cancellation was really, really, really good. And I think that's a bit of a game changer. That's gonna help a lot of people, especially people who are just coming into the content creation space, really get their head around it. So I'm really glad to see those performing so well. And I love how everything is just on device. I love that, you know, you can just access everything through the touch screen or through the analog buttons and do everything you need to do in terms of all your adjustments, all your settings, uh, just accessing those features just through the device with you on the move, on the go, no matter where you are. And I think that's really important because if they put this all through an app or try to kind of take things off device, it would have just added a level of complexity which would have really narrowed down the use case for this device for a lot of people, I think. And I've seen that before with DJI, like when using the DJI, DJI Mobile uh, to film through uh, and, and the gimbal. So it, I just find the app experience there just ends up being a barrier to using it. So I love that everything is just on the device, even just getting the files on and off. Uh, it's just so simple. You just plug in a USB-C cable and there she is, like just loading in a USB stick and you can just grab and drag your stuff off. It's all just so well done. So yes, it's not all roses. Things could definitely be better. I think that this case can be worked slightly so that you can hold everything in it and not have to have both, these, both of these things with you at any one time. I think that the way that the device plugs into your phone makes it kind of challenging for right-handed people at the very least to, to do selfies with the camera especially with the kind of way it sits and the weight and where your hand wants to go. Uh, I thought that the battery life, you know, it, it could have been better than what it is. I think it's okay. I don't think you're gonna really need those huge long battery lives with this device, but the battery life really hasn't come on as much as we thought it would. Uh, maybe some internal storage upgrades could have been handy as well. That's kind of stayed the same between the two variants, the original and upgrading to the DJI Mic 2. The way that the vibrations work and the sound that the vibration makes and how that gets picked up by the mic, is there something they can do there? Can that be improved? I'd also like to see the Bluetooth improved. I understand that there's probably other aspects that are getting in the way of that, like when you're Bluetoothing to a third party device, then the quality of that sound's gonna potentially be affected by its software, but at the moment, upgrading the, you know, using the Bluetooth does take a bit of a hit in the sound quality. And on top of that, when you're actually recording by Bluetooth, you can't also record to the device. So you don't even have that kind of recording on the device as well as through the Bluetooth device. So you're not getting that second recording that is in-house and is keeping the quality bar up. And potentially dynamic gain would be a nice uh, feature to add in in any future additions. But you know, these are, if we're looking at the edges and we're looking for things to criticize, that's potentially where you could go. But you know, you know, you're clutching at straws a little bit. It's fair to say I'm really impressed by the DJI Mic 2. It's just so well thought out and so well designed. When you hold it in your hands, it feels expensive and it feels deliberate. And when you're using the device and going deeper and deeper into it, you can just start to see all these little bits and pieces here and there, which have been deliberately done and thought out with, you know, user experience in mind. And I, and I really appreciate that. I also love the flexibility. I love the fact that you can connect it by Bluetooth to all these other devices and open it up from just simple content creation to all these other, you know, experiences that you, can, you need a mic for. Even if it's just a Zoom call, you know, your solution can be right here with a DJI Mic 2. And I love, love, love how everything is on device, in particular, the active noise cancellation. I think that makes it a lot easier for just, you know, beginners, content creators who are beginners, just regular Joes, regular Janes who are just kind of getting into this space to just be able to pick it up, get some really good audio, muck around for a little bit and get it good first time around and not have to lose lots and lots of time and hours in post trying to get that sound right. And I don't think that can be underestimated, just how much value there is in that. So yeah, look, it's easy to use and it's easy to recommend. I definitely suggest that you put the DJI Mic 2 on your radar if you're looking for a microphone solution for all your content creation needs. Right, thank you very much for watching. I'm Chris Dead. Make sure you check out my other videos and until next time, yeah. 
check it later.